This is P.L. Myers, a shot to the top, pro wrestling's manager extraordinaire. This is Steve Michaels, the master of the Chicago Bear Hug. This is Tim Storm, former NWA World Heavyweight Champion. What's up, guys? This is Mr. 3% John Hudson. This is rock star Johnny Nye, and you're listening to What Do You Say with DDJ. And for those of you who don't tune in, be gone. Welcome to episode 19 of What Do You Say with DDJ. As always, I am your host, DDJ, and a uh, very special episode today, as um, some of you may know. Uh, I recently attended a Chicagoland Championship Wrestling event back on October 3rd, 2020. See, I probably wear the shirt of the company, uh, thanks to uh, owner John Bullard for sending this out to me along with a other, few other goodies. Um, so yeah, so what I decided to do is, is I wanted to, uh, this week I wanted to, uh, do a little something different and, uh, joining me this week will be my very good friend, Xavier Camacho. Um, he is actually the man who was responsible for what you, what you saw on the show. If you've already had a chance to watch it on Amazon prime fight that TV, uh, powered for T and powered for TV. Um, did some amazing film work, made the show look unique, unlike anything I've seen. And uh, yes, I just figured it'd be nice to bring him on and kind of share what it was like for him, uh, you know, growing up as a wrestling fan and, you know, what it was like to maybe not necessarily be in the ring, but being the guy that's capturing the action in the ring. So uh, hope you enjoy this little episode here. Uh, and here we go. It's my uh, interview with uh, my good friend, Head of uh, Pro Wrestling Shoot, uh, that would be Mr. Xavier Camacho. All right, uh, I'm back with another episode of What Do You Say with DDJ, and joining me this evening is my very good friend uh, and the man behind uh, the company known as Pro Wrestling Shoots. Uh, that would be my good buddy, Xavier Camacho. Xavier, how you doing tonight, my man? Doing on great, man. Great to chat with you. I'm excited. It's been a while. It's been a while, but it's cool. It's always good to catch up with you. And likewise, man, like I said, I always liked, you know, my interactions with you being at wrestling shows, running into you, you know, various places, things like that and stuff. So uh, thanks for uh, doing this with me. Yeah, dude. Heck yeah. So I'm going to get right to it. Uh, how did you discover pro wrestling? So I, uh, I wasn't even always a wrestling fan. Not until maybe like it was WrestleMania 23. When it came to that show, I went to a buddy's house to just play Pokemon and hang out. But uh, he had the pay-per-view going, and I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'll watch it with you. But the, the right away, like, just kind of the, the ladder match is what the first thing. I think that's what opened the show. If I'm, I might be wrong, but I think that's what opened it. But You, man, you might have been right. The Money in the Bank, I think. I, I mm -hmm. think it's, I'm not one. It's been so long since I watched that show. Yeah, dude, because it was, it was my first time seeing, like, uh, I mean, just the crowd was huge and stuff. And then just having each guy come out and then the ladders being involved and stuff, I just got freaking hooked. My cousins were always into wrestling growing up. So, like, mm -hmm. we would casually play a couple games. I don't even know what games they were. I would just always – I'll pick Kane because I like – he was in a mask and recognizable and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was never, like, a follower until WrestleMania 23. That's when I got hooked. I forgot what grade I was in, but I was, I was maybe, like, about to be a teenager or something like that. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so who were uh, – when you uh, started getting into it, who were some of, the, like, the guys that you found yourself becoming fans of right off the bat? Uh, right off the back, Jeff Hardy. He like he was like my go-to guy because he jumped off a ladder. Like he was about to win it, and but instead of like winning it, I think Matt was telling him like, "Don't do it" or to jump or something like that. But then he like I think he jumps onto maybe Edge, 
Yeah, it was and, Edge, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right. So, so actually, an Edge also was like one of my favorites. Still is one of my favorites today, mainly because of the song at the entrance. Was like, you think you know me? Yeah. <laughs> All coming up and stuff. <laughs> it was always fun watching them. So yeah, Jeff Jeff Hardy would right away became my favorite. So did Edge and uh, Batista too. He stuck out to me. I just love the back when they had more pyro and stuff when he would do the machine gun thing. Yep. Yeah, man, that that had me hooked. I was a big fan of Batista. Yeah, that's a yeah. Those are some. That was a. Those are some really good uh, guys to kind of attach yourself to. Um, so obviously, since you came into it, WrestleMania twenty three, which again I believe was two thousand and seven. Um, did so have you been able to really go back and watch a lot of the older I mean, stuff? The older stuff, yeah, man. So ever since then, I kind of just first I was just kind of watching SmackDown because at the time mm-hmm. I didn't have cable, so I was always watching SmackDown, and it, I think it was like on my fifty. And, and so it was more accessible. But then eventually with the internet and, and stuff like that, I was able to do more research on YouTube. So mm-hmm. I kind of started going back. My dad would tell me all the time about Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And that was like his favorite guy. So I liked some of his stuff. I think there was a match on YouTube that I saw. I think he might fight like Ric Flair or something. But it was cool just seeing like the old cameras and like how, how they, it was kind of still, but just the story was like crazy. They weren't even talking about that, but it was just like, it was a good match to kind of get hooked into. So I kind of like, uh, I kind of like them too. Yeah. You, uh, Flair and Steamboat are actually my two favorites. So yeah, oh, so nice. I, 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 they, I, and they had a match back in and if you haven't seen this one, please go watch it. If you have the network or even probably find it on YouTube or some, mm-hmm. uh, it was back in 1989, I believe it was the second match in their series of three they had that year. Two out of three falls at the Clash of the Champions six. Check that match out. It's like, in my opinion, it's the best match I've ever seen. Oh, snap. Man. Yeah, yeah, dude. After this, I'll, I'll put it on. I'll Thanks, look. Man. Yeah. Look at the network, so I'll search it. You said what, what show was that one? Uh, Clash of the Champions six. Okay, sweet. okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. I haven't seen – I don't think I've seen that one, but I'll check it out for sure. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the old school stuff, so I, I definitely – you know, really appreciate good stuff like that. And so obviously when you went back and started watching stuff from like, say the attitude era and even the eighties, besides you mentioned, you know, flair and steam, but were there any other guys that you really found yourself becoming fans of wanting to see more of? Uh, I really, I really loved watching uh compilation videos of Ric Flair with mm. just his promos. Cause like just him talking, like doing interviews and stuff. I loved watching that stuff, bro. Like even like today, randomly I'll put on, just like a, like a stream of, of highlight videos of just him talking and stuff just because he's so captivating man he the energy and all the woos and the way the, the girls in the crowd like react to him and stuff is crazy <laughs> but it's really fun I like I like going back to watch like his work mainly promo work but when it comes to the attitude era for sure the rock man because I, I like really like talking bro like I, lo- I love the the fights and all that but the mm-hmm. way that uh, they really get you with their characters and m- making you believe when, when they're talking and shooting promos. And then uh, even I go back to, to watch the, the Eddie Guerrero one where he's talking about, oh, I'm an addict and I'm going to get that championship. I'm, an ad- I'm addicted to the thrill of like winning or something like that. Right. He's, uh, talking to Brock Lesnar. Yeah, like, I, I really like going back to watch that kind of stuff too. So I, I mean, Eddie, The Rock. Um, those are, those guys always stood out to me when it came to like attitude and like what is it ruthless aggression? I think. Yes, yeah, yeah. Nice. So See, those guys are my faves. Yeah. So you mentioned you you a lot of the things I'm hearing about. You know, you're talking about promos and stuff. What was it about the promos that really kind of like cooked you? I think it was just like just how they make you believe. Cause it's like when you're watching wrestling, like and when I was new to me and stuff, I was always kind of like, is this real? Like, are they, are they really like hurting each other or this and that? And then right. I kind of decided to understand like the, the, I guess the art of it. So just understanding like what it's all about and stuff, but the promos and how they can just really grasp an audience and make them like make the audience boo you or cheer you or, or just start chanting crazy stuff. Like it's just fun, man. And get, you, you can feel like the energy and stuff. They're just so charismatic you get to understand like just more of who they are kind of thing. So that, that I've always liked watching that, like the promos. Now, let me ask you this. What is your favorite promo of all time? Damn, dude. Oh, I'm trying to think, you know, okay. You know, which one sticks out to me? I don't, I, I don't know if I have a favorite favorite, but this one always sticks out to me. Okay, cool. It's, yeah. um, it's the one where like Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, I, I, they might be SmackDown. 
And it's like when Jeff, I think he like got the pyro attacking him and his house had gone on fire and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Matt Hardy, he's like, hey, like, what about your dog, Jeff? Or, like, or something like that. He's like, hey, what if it was all just one person? It's like, he's kind of taunting him, like, oh, I was behind all of your attacks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then Jeff Hardy comes down and he's like, you're sick. You yes, I remember and that. I did, but so am I. <laughs> Start fighting and stuff. Dude, I love that one because I think the story there was just that. I think Jeff just didn't want to kind of fight him, but like I think Matt kept provoking him, kept pushing him, pushing him. So then I think when he starts talking about his dog and losing his dog in a fire, and I, I don't know if that was true or not, but it sucks if it is. So rest in peace to Jack if, if that's true. But dude, I remember that so well. And he just spears him and starts punching him and stuff. That was so cool to me because I was like, oh shit, like. He's actually he's actually going for him now. And I think I think that's when they fought at WrestleMania, maybe twenty five. Uh yes, that was WrestleMania twenty five. So yeah, yeah. I, that was uh, that because I remember I think it was at the Rumble was when um, uh, Matt Hardy had cost Jeff Hardy, I believe, the WWE yeah. title. And that's yeah, yeah right against everything. Title. And then when he cut the promo and stuff, so not too long after that. He he hit him with the chair, right? Like yeah. Yep. Dude, yeah, I remember that. That shocked me. I was like, what? I was yeah. like, no way. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, I think that's, like, one of my favorites just because cause you could feel it, man. Like, the brothers and just the chemistry they have and it's just finally saying, ah, oh, screw it. I'm tired of you, blah, blah, blah. So I think that one is one of my favorites. That one and, bro, the when Shawn Michaels and, and Undertaker, or like, when he's trying to get uh, Undertaker to accept. Yes, Dude, and I, and it's more of like the 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 highlight package, like the the video where like they show the whole story. But when when he's at the Slammies and he's like challenging them, he's like, "Let's go one more time." And then like Undertaker is like, "My answer is no." And it's like then it just shows like his story of trying to win the Rumble and then coming up from the Elimination Chamber to super kick yep. him. That one video, bro, I can watch that one like any day and still get goosebumps. That's such a good one. Yeah, they WWE like said so they get a lot of uh, like flack for a lot of the way they do things now. But the one thing they've always been really good at is like putting those videos together. Ooh, yeah, dude. Because even like before before the network, that's what I would like spend a lot of time on YouTube, just searching up those highlight packages, like mm -hmm. to get the story and get the snippets of the matches. But I just loved like the just how engaged you can get in the story, how much you can just. I get sucked into it, dude. That that would all that always like blew me away. So I've always loved those. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned too, like said, hearing a lot of this is like you know you talk about the video packages they put together, and so what is it, what 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 is it about like that kind of stuff that really dream is that like something that you want you wanted to go to school for? Or? Hmm. So yeah, so I've always like my buddies and I like we would skateboard and, and like just skateboarding like in high school and stuff. We would record random stuff. And then we would just record like stuff that we would, we would make us laugh, like skits and stuff like that. So that's how we kind of like taught each ourselves how to like shoot and edit. And like we would like pirate a fucking like on, like before after LimeWire and the pirate van and stuff like that. We would get like um, the programs to like teach ourselves how to edit and stuff like that. So it was always like a fun hobby to do like after school. And then in high school, like I was a part of like a video club for a little bit, like but it like kind of fell apart but it was like always something I was like interested in so then um for school thankfully I was able to earn a scholarship so they they sent me out to DePaul uh, University in Indiana oh wow in Indiana because so I went out there and they took care of tuition for me so it was a great experience I, I majored in communications and studied film studies as well so there was no like at the time there was no video production sort of route it was just like a lot of theory and, and media studies and that kind of focus. So it was cool learning about like how it all works. But my favorite class was television. It was uh, t t TV lit and production. So okay. like we were kind of in the studio, got an idea of how to like change like different like uh, like cameras and stuff, camera one and camera two, camera three. So like that's that like, was my favorite class because I felt like that was the closest to, to where I got to kind of something I really wanted to do. So that was my favorite. And that's when I kind of realized, like, I would, I would like a job like that. But it was more about, okay, how do I get there kind of thing. So um, it, I didn't necessarily study too much on the video production part in college. But I was always teaching myself like outside of it, like just how to do certain things. I'm not great master at a, a special effects or nothing like that. But I love like narrative editing. So like putting shots together to where it looks good. And like it's making sense, like it flows well and stuff. Right. Um. So I've always, I've always loved doing that. 
And um, when I came back to Chicago after college, that's when uh, for a little bit I was working at a movie theater as a bartender. So I was always watching a bunch of movies. So, like after work, I can like go and watch a movie and stuff right. like that. So kind of just get to that. Now it's fun. But I was just kind of studying like what was in, like what people liked. Like so when like, they would come to the bar, like we would chat about what movie they were going to see and afterwards if they liked it, what they didn't like and stuff. So I was always trying to like just learn like what is catching people's attention. And I always had uh, like the rule I'm at the bar, like they were like, you have to have sports or uh, it was like sports news or, or the cooking channel. So like my sports was WWE, so I would put that on. <laughs> so it was always like funny to have guys come and sit and we'd watch wrestling, chat about it. And it was just cool getting to see different perspectives of like what made wrestling fun or attractive or unattractive and stuff like that. But um, then, 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 you know, it just kind of evolved to where I was like, well, I love watching wrestling and I like, I love movies. Like my buddies and I shoot some short films here and there. So I was like, what if I just kind of tried shooting some wrestling stuff? So then I kind of just stepped into a couple of indie shows, started taking my camera, started talking to people, see if I could do some stuff and kind of just started getting the ball rolling like that. And now, and that's when I created my Instagram, which is Pro Wrestling Shoots. Mm-hmm. And uh, it kind of just from there, I just would dump like material on there. And then it just kind of started turning into like, oh, like, do you want to do this legit for us? Or do you want to help us and blah, blah, blah. And it's just been able to open doors for me. So that's really cool. So it was really just like taking my interests and then just kind of running with it, trying to just see what I can do. Like kind of trying to put myself in situations where I can learn or or um or just go and help and stuff like that and now I'm shoot wrestling so there, there we go. go so i know i used to run into you at the uh like when mlw would run shows and sister yeah. what uh did now were you uh doing any, any like uh kind of uh filming for them not officially not no i would do um before this like the first show in chicago mm-hmm. um i forgot exactly the name of it but it was like in, like i think early 2019 or late 2018. So I was a part of the media, the, the street team. So we would go and like put posters up and stuff like that. Okay. And so sometimes when the main guy wasn't able to make it, he would ask me to lead it. So I became kind of like a, like a lead guy for that. So mm-hmm. we would meet up, me and myself and groups of people, and we just go throughout different neighborhoods, put posters in businesses, talk to them about what MOW was and why they, maybe they should support it and blah, blah, blah. So that kind of started getting that going. So I got to meet a couple cool people there. And then uh, they would let me watch the show after we would do our other job, which was uh, like seat directing. So like when people come in, help them find their seats, like based off where they bought their tickets and stuff. And if right. they needed help, like getting another chair or, or they had questions, I would help them do all that. And then once the show was running and I mean, everyone's enjoying it, I get to watch it. Or they would be like, yeah, you can go over there. So I would sit like under the hard cam next to like wrestling with unicorns, Martin and, and a photographer, Basil. So like I would sit with them and they would do their thing and I was getting my stuff and they're like, yeah, you can shoot just uh, like tag us and don't record the whole thing. Cause they want to like have people watch the actual show. Right. So I would just do stuff like that. So I was able to kind of get to know people in MLW through all of that really. So what, how did that, so you went from obviously, you know, to be in a, you know, passing out flyers, you know, basically spreading the word of MLW. How did you get involved in becoming like, let's say where you were like the camera guy at, at, you know, these independent shows? Okay. In the- yeah. So uh, really from, I think what MLW like kind of taught me was just kind of like how to engage with people. And just like, I would, sometimes I would get nervous trying to like, if I had to talk to somebody new, but I think just talking to so many people around the street and passing the flyers and stuff, it kind of really helped me just break the ice easier. So when it came to like other indies and I would show up, I would kind of try to scope, see like who's the guy in charge. Maybe it's the guy uh, giving out tickets at the door or something. I would ask them, hey, like what's going on? Like, I think the first place I went to was uh, Berwyn Championship Wrestling. Yeah. And there they were really friendly and they were really nice. And I had asked them, hey, I have my camera. Can I take some photos? They said, yeah. And then um, so I would take my photos and put them on Instagram, tag them, did like a promo with someone and mm-hmm. they liked it. And they were like, hey, like, if you want to help us out, we don't have a, or they won't always have like a camera person. So um, they were like, would you want to try shooting for us? And I was like, well, I've never done it, but I know how to. So let's do it. Like, let, you know, I'm down. So I would have a, a camera on hard cam 
then myself, uh, I would do like the entrance and ring. So I really just taught myself by just doing it. And I was like, I've watched enough wrestling to kind of get an idea of what to expect when it comes to like guys setting up a certain move or they might jump out of the ring. So you want to maneuver yourself, you know, anticipate the next move so you can know where to put the, sh the camera for the shots. So I kind of really just, just taught myself kind of like, just got lucky. They asked, Hey, you know how to use a camera? You know how to record? You got coming. Do you want to do it? I said, yeah, bam. I started doing that with them. And then uh, it got me excited. So then I went to AAW and it was one time I actually was like up there getting shots and stuff. And they're like, yo, like, who are you? Like, we like get off the stage and blah, blah, blah. So like, it was kind of like, I had to learn from that experience though too. Like you have to talk to the promoters and talk to the people in charge so that you're not just like, a potential like bootlegger or something like that you know right so, and then so and also at freelance like it was all within one month that i just got excited and started hopping to different indies and i had never been to the indies other than like berwin so it was a little bit smaller than aaw but it was just the excitement of seeing how different crowds were but how like still fun it all was oh yeah kind of the talent and all that so it was just an exciting thing i went to freelance as well and and met nick and nick was really cool and then we, uh, one time he chatted with me. He's like, hey, man, I really like it. But don't put on, like, the whole match. Because I think for them, I, like, was recording a little too much. Because, like, we want to, like, still sell it and stuff. And he kind of helped me understand that. And I was like, oh, snap. Like, now I see it. But, like, my intention was really just to try to help. Because I was like, oh, I can, like, make, I can, like, shoot some good stuff. And I'll help you guys. But they're like, yeah, we appreciate it. But talk to us so we know who you are. And let's get to know, know each other. And we'll tell you where you can help and stuff like that. So, Freelance let me do their backstage promos with the wrestlers with Val. And that was really fun. I, I love going to that show. And then eventually with AAW, uh, the promoter hit me up. He was look, he was trying to recruit a couple guys to start doing an actual ring camp. And since he had seen some of my work, he had extended an offer to me. So I said, heck yeah, do the full circle. Like just trying to help and now being a part of that team, it's it's really fun. It's a it's a good journey. But I think the, the biggest thing I learned is just communicate with the people in charge and just build a relationship so you guys can, like, work with each other and help each other. And, uh, yeah, just, just talk to each other and just see what you can do and where you can help. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this. Yeah. How did you go from, you know, you going to, say, like, you know, AAW, you know, filming for them, you know, doing some stuff with freelance. How did it go from that to you basically starting up your own you know, company pro wrestling. Shoot. Yeah. So, I mean, really just, it was, it all started just with an Instagram. So with my Instagram is where I would just data dump all my photos and videos. Cause I just didn't want to barrage like all my other friends and family who don't really like wrestling. So I was like, let me have this, just one page. People can see stuff. And then like at the time, Instagram had just the one minute limit, like IGTV. I don't think it was a thing yet. So like where well, it might've been, but I don't think people were really using it. So I would just put like, uh, the, the promo videos and packages on, and highlights onto YouTube. And Berwin also let me put stuff onto the YouTube. That way more people can see the product. So it kind of really just evolved from that. It was like somewhere to place it. And then it was just like, this is my brand. So like now they know where to find my work, kind of mm -hmm. like a resume. And yeah. uh, so me, and also a uh, way I went about it too was when I was like job searching, I would always look at WWE stuff. And I was like, man, I would love to work for this company and blah, blah, blah. But, um, what I would do is and I would go to the job qualifications like to see what they needed. Right. I would, I would write those bullet points down because I had no experience in them. So I was like, let me learn how to do these things on these indies. So like I was able, like for one of them, then you need to know how to like true promos and, and work with talent, blah, blah, blah. So that helped me with freelance. Like I started doing that with them. So that was kind of like crossing off that bullet point on the qualification thing when it came to doing different camera work, being able to do all of the whole show for Berwin taught me that. So that was another thing you could cross off. So I would use like their qualification thing for job positions as like bullet points of what I need to teach myself and what I need to like study and all of that. So I would use that as reference and, and what I needed to go and, and just get experience in. And people just, uh, thankfully they, they liked the way I would shoot stuff and edit it. So just more people started asking me to help and I've, I've been able to work with a, a couple of different companies here. So it's really just evolved from there, just talking with people and building relationships and communicating, just talking. 
So, um, so one of the things too that I think this is kind of one of the first like instances where I think I really got to you know know you and solidify our friendship was when you were uh, doing some filming at uh, the Pro Wrestling Tea Store All Out Weekend. I think uh, oh, yeah. I believe you were helping out with uh, the documentary that uh, Christian put together about the store. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was doing like uh, interviews with you guys, right? Like asking. Yeah. Like what's your what are you guys most excited about for all out weekend and all that? So yeah, I was able to do that and that was really fun too. What was it like working with you know? Um, I mean, I've I've had the pleasure of meeting Christian, uh, a real good dude. We sat by each other, we hung out at uh, AEW Revolution and stuff, and that. But uh, oh, that was so much fun getting a chance to meet him like that and at the C2E2 convention and stuff. But like, what was it like working with him? Like, you know, did he, did you just like shoot the footage and let him use it? Did you like, how did, how does something like that work when you're like shooting footage for a documentary? Oh, for the, for the documentary, that's mainly all the Christian. He like directed it, him and uh, Ryan Barkin did all of that stuff together. I was just able to contribute like footage that I had from around the shop and events like that. I was able to contribute with that. But I can't take any major credit for that project. Uh, Christian was like the main man behind it all, so so they did a really great job at that. But I was uh, because I was around and able to grab footage that he wasn't able to grab sometimes, mm -hmm. just random like the signings and stuff like that. I was able to give them that to you. So like I did contribute, but the main the main thing was them doing that. Right. But it was but I had always wanted to do a documentary too. But uh, it was really neat that he ran with it and made it happen because it was a great one. Yes, it was. Very much enjoyed it. So, uh, so let me ask you this: when, um, now, pro wrestling shoots, are you? Is that is that just you? Do you have some other like people that help you do it? Tell me about like tell me about your crew. I'm like, cool. Yeah, uh, my main my main A one is my girlfriend actually, Eileen. She's really cool. She's been really supportive with like me shoot, uh, going for wrestling and trying to make it happen as a career. She uh, would actually go to shows with me because she would watch wrestling with her father when she was younger. They would watch SmackDown also. So um, she like had a like she liked it, but she wasn't like an avid watcher. Mm -hmm. But just even just going to a show itself is a lot more fun than watching it on TV because you're there and and people yep. you feel the energy and it just feels way different. So she kind of got hooked a bit with it too. So she would go to shows with me. And then when it came to when Berwin gave me the opportunity to shoot the whole show, I was like, well, I could technically like press record and run and do my thing, but that would be like uh, not as uh, not as smart because you never know if someone might move the camera or if it stops right. recording and stuff. You don't want to let them down and do something wrong. So she was like, yo, like teach me how to do it and, and I'll help you. So I was like, okay, like this is how you frame a shot and make sure like, you know, this it looks good in the frame, and I put on the, what is it called, like the the third thing, so that way you could kind of see, like mm -hmm. you could frame better and stuff. So she would, I would help her with that, and taught her, and she was really good at being able to move it, like when you need to. So she helped me off with that. So she's like my go-to girl. She's really cool. She always helps out. Um, also, my cousin Damien, when we were, we were at Chicagoland cha Championship Wrestling, he recorded the second ring cam. Okay, so he was the guy. Time. He was he was the guy that was with you at that. Getting, he was kind of getting more of the reaction shots. Yeah, and, yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember him. Yeah, so that's my younger cousin. He and he loves wrestling. He loves UFC. Mm -hmm. Right now, he's all about working out. He's trying to like bulk up and so he can like get into fighting like legitimately. So that was that's always been kind of his like his forte. So he loves it too, and and he knows that that I'm really passionate about shooting wrestling. So he's like, bro, like. If you ever need any help, let me know, and I'm down to help. So I taught him beforehand kind of how to use, like, the stabilizer, how to how to also framing. Because I think that's, like, the main thing you got to know is just, like, framing. Like, make sure it looks good and, like, anticipate the movements, anticipate the moves so you know where to move yourself. And Because if, if you miss, like, a move, you can't go back in time and get it. So you always got to, like, be anticipating the next thing they're going to do. So I was able to teach him. Uh, my buddy Corey also he's a really cool friend of mine we actually went to college together and he's always been a good guy to, for me to talk about ideas with he always gave me advice and what I should do and then maybe how to go about it for a little bit he was also training to be a wrestler but he just got a little bit busy with work and stuff so he put that on pause mm -hmm. but uh, he's always been a great support and uh, my buddy David and my cousin Omar 
it's like six of us mainly that are like my 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 little crew that I can talk to and get advice from and just they encourage me to keep going so they're always really helpful like they, my buddy David he's a little bit of a shorter guy I'm short he's shorter than me so like <laughs> with the, with, what's really nice about us though is that we don't get in the way too much of like people's views so that's actually beneficial for us so um, he's always been helpful my cousin also so it's really really it's myself Eileen and then David uh, Corey Omar like my support system but main, mainly it's been myself and my girlfriend who have done a lot of the recording because even like when I'm running around at freelance doing the backstage promos she'll be like in her seat grabbing just clips for me to kind of like tie them in so she was really cool with that yeah so now did you ever have any aspirations of becoming a pro wrestler or were you more always wanting to be involved with the production well, yeah, when I, when I uh, started getting into it, I was always like, man, I could be like the next Rey Mysterio and stuff. <laughs> and that, so, but like, uh, I never was too serious about it. It was always like a dream to be involved with wrestling. Yeah. And I mean, like being a wrestler is kind of the first thing you maybe think of. But then it wasn't until like, you know, in college and, and then going to just record stuff where I was like, hmm, like maybe I can uh, find, a, maybe I can help in a different way. Because I mean, there's so many wrestlers and there's so many great talents. I feel like you got to be 110% committed to this every day and this yeah. and that. So I was like, well, that might not be my perfect spot to get into and help, but I'm good at recording and I'm good at editing. So let me see if I can help that way. And from there, it just, it grew and it's been, it's developed into a passion. So I, I have a love for it. So it's, it's fun too, because watching wrestling is a good time. So I kind of consider it like best seat in the house. You get to be right there up front and oh, yeah. it really, really get to, get to get the whole feeling. So, and yeah, I, when I was younger, I kind of wanted to be one, but it was never like too serious. What about you? No, I, I, I just, I physically, I was never the, I had the kind of build to where like professional wrestling would be in my calling, you know, like you, you know, I would, I've always kind of wanted to be involved in some aspect of the wrestling business. And by this podcast has kind of allowed me to, you know, to do that because, you know, I've got, you know, I've had so many, you know, guys on from CCW and a few others, things of that nature. So that's always been, you know, it's been a lot of fun kind of, you know, some, I guess you could say, you know, realizing a dream or something like where I can be involved in the wrestling business. You know, I have this podcast. I have the other one that I do with my uh, buddy Spencer and Jovan uh, called The Junkyard. Um, yeah. you know, and that's kind of one that's allowed me to interview some more like, uh, like mainstream talents. Like our sec, we had, we've done, I think, by the time this episode drops, we'll be on, I want to say, believe it'll be episode seven, like we'll be about ready to come out. And uh, for like our second episode, we actually were able uh, to uh, get an interview with Tama Tonga. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I know that you guys did that. Yeah, and he was a lot of fun. We got to talk to him for about a half hour. And then uh, for episode six, which uh when this episode drops episode six of the junkyard will have been out for about a week we actually uh had on uh chris van vliet oh and he was just so much fun it was like we we finished recording that uh a couple of days prior to me recording with you and it just though after we were done like me and my buddies uh spencer and jovan shout out to the junkyard um we were uh we were talking about how this that th 30 minutes we had with chris just went flew by and it only felt like five minutes or something uh -huh. you know, on that so so being able to kind of have that in interaction and experience has really been a lot of fun and just again i'm sure you'd probably say the same thing you know with what you do you know but it's really it made me even appreciate you know the world of professional wrestling that much more right yeah and i think it's always fun too to just to just engage with each other as fans and mm -hmm. and, and, and be fans and like well, i guess we gotta be professional and all that but enjoying it is like nothing else man like re wrestling is so like such a niche so i feel like the the fans with it like it's it, you become like family pretty easily oh absolutely enjoy it so much absolutely like i said i consider you a good friend we met as a result of professional wrestling um you know my buddies that i do the junkyard with you know we've never met face to face we've just met through a wrestling group that uh we all joined on facebook you know but we've become pretty close 
yeah. you know, I've got, you know, all my friends that were at the shop, you know, all out weekend, you know, like my boy, Charlie, my boy, Mustafa, you know, all the, all the guys and gals, uh, Maria, who I believe came all the way from Denmark. Um, and if, if Maria, it's cool, right? you literally, literally worldwide and it brings yeah. everyone together. And it's just like, you can go one of the professional wrestling is the only thing I think of that. Like when you can go to a show by yourself, but yet you'll sit with someone and then all of a sudden you just start talking and just like, next thing you know, it's like, you know, you're talking like you guys are best friends and stuff. So yeah, man, no, yeah. The most definitely. I think that there's magic behind it, bro. So it's, pro, it's definitely fun. And pro wrestling fans. I honestly, and I'll say this all the time are the majority of them are the nicest, just most genuinely like fun people to associate with. I mean, yeah, there are a few bad apples out there, but of course it's like that in any, but any, fa- any fan base, but it just seems like in the world of pro wrestling versus like, you know, football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, whatever, you know, it just seems like, you know, pro wrestling's more inclusive versus exclusive, you know? So, and that's one of the reasons, another reason why I love pro, res- uh, pro wrestling so much. Yeah, man. No, I, I completely agree with you, bro. And that's definitely, a- definitely, uh, brings us all together that's fun absolutely so a couple more questions here and then we'll start wrapping it up um how did you uh get involved with ccw did you reach out to them did they uh did john bullard reach out to you yeah so uh i was i had come to see that the company was starting on facebook pretty much Mm -hmm. i I remember first seeing it uh like the when it was even the first logo i think the star was different then they changed Mm -hmm. it and then i i just remember that because it stuck out to me i was like oh this is Interesting concept. Like, yeah, I like the logo. But I was yeah, like, I got the, I'm wearing my shirt. Yeah, I, can see here. <laughs> I think I think the star was, I think, five at first. But then people were like, oh, like if it's Chicago, it got to be six. And they fixed it right away. Mm-hmm. And then um, I remember I remember just seeing it on, on the book a lot. And then John Bullard actually messaged me telling me about it, how it was a new company. It was coming out. And then uh, we would just, it was like a couple of small chats. And he was very nice and friendly. And then he actually said, like, oh, like, I've seen some of your stuff. Uh, would you like to work together? And, like, I'm trying to scout a team. So he recruited me essentially that way. And we decided talking more than what I could do. And, and I was like, he would ask, oh, can you do the whole show, this and that? Showed him that I did it at Berwyn. I've also done four shows for Wrestle League before mm-hmm. and, uh, and for uh, Square Circle Megastars. So he was able to see, like, how I was able to record that whole show and edit it for them. And he liked it. So he basically asked if I would join on board and really it was just from communicating with each other. Then that's what's cool about just uh, shooting your shot, just communicate, message each other and see what you guys can build. And it really just from there really just started building. Right. So uh, one of the things that, and, um, that I wanted to ask you about, cause this is actually something I was just made aware of when I recorded with Steve uh, Arendt, uh, he had told me that there was an issue when he and uh, Joey Roth was doing, uh, was doing, they were doing the commentary for the show. And he had told me that they had to come, they had to get with you again to uh, basically redo all of the commentary for this show. Um, So when something like that happens, like what, what, how do you go about rectifying it? Because like I said, I didn't even honestly know, until That's Steve good, out to me because <laughs> what I've seen on the show, what I've seen on the show so far, I mean, everything sound, just sounded flawless. Nice. Cool. Thank you, man. That means that we did our job pretty well. <laughs> but like, so, what, yeah, just, yeah. Talk to me a little bit more about what it was like, you know, like when you realized the audio, the commentary had the issues and it had to be re-recorded. Yeah. So, so um, it was at the end of the show where uh, Coriander, uh, John Bullard's wife, she ended up uh, sending, we, she was sending me the audio files. And as I was going through it, I started listening. I was like, uh oh, like there's one hiccup that it just, it didn't sound good. I don't know who set up. I that was, I'm not a sound technician. So uh-huh. I don't know who set it up. Um, it wasn't recording correctly. Okay. So, I mean, they recorded, but I think just some wire might have been put in the wrong spot. So it sounded very like, echoing and just just not perfect and we're like dang this is not what we can use so what can we do but then john bullard what he did is uh he ended up shipping me the materials like the soundboard the headphones uh the mics and stuff so i was like okay cool send me the stuff i'll learn how to use it so i spent like like just a few days like maybe a week to like learn it configure it all myself and practice 
And then I was like, okay, this is good. Like I, I learned how to set it up right. And then I invited them to actually come over to my place. And Joey Roth and Steve came over and we basically I set it up to where I just made it like a makeshift studio space. <laughs> and then uh, we put on the show because I had the show already edited by then. So mm -hmm. I was able to, they were watching the matches while they had the headphones on and the mics so that they can do commentary then. So then when I, had, I was able to record the audio files like that and then sync that up to the video, like the matches that I already had done. So it was, yeah, it was like a post sort of thing. But I actually had uh, my sisters come over and help me out before they came because I was like, just I just need you guys to put on this, the equipment and let's just talk over this match so I could like test it out and make sure everything was right and it was spot on. So that way I was ready for Steve and Joy when they came and we just kind of got to it. So we had some uh, breakfast and drinks for them to enjoy when they came and mm -hmm. when we started recording because it was like three hours. We would just do one match at a time so that, that way – they can drink some water and right. the can set in and stuff and they could uh, get themselves like rebooted. And it was fun though. It was really fun. Cause it was, it was cool get, getting to see their reaction, watching the show, like from the camera perspective instead of, instead right. of live. So it was cool. Cause they, they were like, Oh wow. Like they were very like engaged into it still. So like they were able to get lost in it and feel like if they were actually there again. And then what was also um, I think beneficial from what they told me was that when you're there live, sometimes they might miss like a move or a certain angle or something. So mm -hmm. being able to see it from multiple shots kind of helped them like articulate more stuff that was going on. So it ended up working out in the long, and at the end of the day, it all worked out pretty well. And and if you guys can't notice it when you're watching it, then that's perfect. Cause that, you're supposed to just get lost and you guys are getting lost. So that's great. Well, yeah, it's like I said, like I had no idea. And then like, I'm, you know, I'm talking with Steve and, He's like, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. And then that's when he told me. And literally, you know, I'm going, you know, my mind, <laughs> like it, yeah. it sounded great. And I mean, uh, and that, so um, now was it when, when, you know, John came to you and, you know, wanted you to do the, do the, you know, the filming of the show and stuff like that. Was it the, was it his idea or was it a mutual thing? But like, in terms of like what the presentation turned out to be in terms of like the being like, you know, filmed in a more cinematography, you know, in more of a cinematographic style by hopefully I pronounced no, that. I get, properly. You, I get you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but like, was it more like, was it his idea? Was it a collaborative thing? Like, tell me a little bit more about the, uh, what led to the, uh, the presentation that, you know, the people that are watching the show on Amazon prime and powered for TV, like, you know, what they ended up seeing. Yeah, so he he got an, an idea of how I was able to shoot and how I made the shows look. So mm -hmm. he liked what I was already doing. And um, actually, uh, actually, it ended up, I think, working out a little bit better with that our first show didn't happen in April and we had a couple months to, to prepare a little bit more mm -hmm. because throughout that time, I was able to actually save up a little bit more and invest in better equipment that I had not had yet. So okay. I was... Um, I, and it was a C3 wrestling show where I just went, I talked to Chris and I had asked him, can I, hey, can I come and record some stuff? And I just want to test out my equipment. And so I, he, they let me, so I was able to practice there. And I was like, okay, this is like, great. This is like what I wanted. So with my new cameras and, and my new equipment, I was able to, to practice on that show. So I had an idea of already what I wanted to do for CCW. And he pretty much trusted me with just like getting it all and making it look good. So when it was, it came to me to, a week, I had given him a few different like colorings. So like, the, you know, I wanted him to see like what kind of look he liked more, but like it was kind of me to, to decide like, okay, we're going to do this shot and then this shot and stuff like that as I'm editing it. But it was a collaboration and seeing how he wanted it to look like stylistically. So <laughs> I gave him a couple of different ideas and, and he was like, dude, that's, that one's perfect. So we ended up with the final product, how it looks is what we decided on, but it was, um, as we were shooting, it was kind of in my head of like how I wanted it all to be too. So, so it, it was really smooth. Like with the extra few months that with with the pandemic and all that, so I was able to actually just think about it even more. Like it just gave me more time to prepare, more time to anticipate it all. So we was just by the time that the show came around, we were already itching to to make some magic happen. So it would it was actually a blessing in the skies that we just had more time to prepare because it really I think. It's just proper preparation, you know, prevents poor performance or whatever. So I think it was just, it was cool. We had more time to practice and 
get it all done. But it's really the, I think the upgrade in equipment is what helped out make it look even more cinematic. Because before, uh, when I first started, I was just using my iPhones and I would have them on stabilizers and mm -hmm. I would just change the setting on the iPhone to where like you couldn't really tell that it was an iPhone because it was stable and the shots looked really smooth and how I would edit it and I would put like a LUT on it to make it look a little different. So I was able to get all that practice. So then when I got the new stuff, it was just like a whole different feel, but right. I already knew like what to do basically. I was just doing the same stuff just with better equipment. So I think that's what really kind of just improved the quality of the show as well. Awesome. So uh, last thing I got for you here before I let you go is, is um, this is usually toward the end here where I give, you know, my interview, we, you know, so a time to, if you got any shows coming up, you know, how they can reach out, reach you, reach you on social media. You know, obviously if you're, if it's any, anybody that, you know, has that wrestles for a company that's looking for, you know, someone to do you know do their shows you know how can uh how can people reach you yeah so people can reach me uh through facebook i'm on facebook as my name xavier camacho i also have a pro wrestling shoots facebook and uh as you can search that one it's, it's wrestling not wrestling yep side, side note i got this uh the verbiage is from a south park episode i don't know if you, i don't know if you watch south park are you talking about the wtf episode Dude, yeah. I <laughs> like, love I, I, Aslan. <laughs> I that is one of my, I, I love South Park. It's one of my all time favorite shows. And that episode is one of my favorite episodes. Dude, me now. too. Me too. So yeah, that that episode always made me laugh, bro. So that's that's why I was like, all right, I'm gonna go with this word instead, just because I love the show, so it made me laugh. But uh yeah, so you can just search Pro Wrestling shoots on Facebook on uh, YouTube too, just to see the stuff I have up there. I haven't posted too much recently because just there has been like a lack of shows going on. Right. But um, I'm also available through email, pro wrestling shoots at gmail.com. Uh, Twitter, PW shoots, Instagram, pro wrestling shoots. Everything's basically pro wrestling shoots, except for Twitter because it was a little too long. So I had to cut it to PW shoots. But it's the easiest way is just to message me on social media or email and we can just chat and get the ball going really from there. Um, I, I feel like uh, if anyone ever wants to talk, just hit me up. I'm, I feel like I'm pretty open. I'm trying to be friendly so we can all just make some magic happen. All right. So, uh, uh, all righty then. Well, Xavier, uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking some time to sit down and explain to me a little bit about uh, what you do. Uh, and for those of you listening to this, if you want to see an example of the great work that Xavier and his crew put on, please check out Chicagoland Championship Wrestling Saturday Night Grapple Masters show. It is uh, currently available on Amazon Prime, Fight.TV, uh, Powered for TV, I believe. Did I get everything? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, man. That, that, and I'm, I'm super excited from the feedback we've been getting so far. So it, it makes it all worth it. So I'm super happy about that. Can I say one more thing, though? Absolutely. Sweet, man. So thank you. Um, on my YouTube channel, my goal was to, was, I mean, I don't really promote myself too much. I kind of just let it be and let it grow kind of naturally a bit. So mm -hmm. right now I'm at 685 subscribers. So I wanted to get to a thousand by the end of this year, but there's just been a lack of stuff. So I haven't really put too much out. But and when I get to 700, so only 15 more, I'm going to start having, finally, I'm going to put up like merch so I can have some people so it's, it's a super simple design, but it's really just the words on a shirt. But if anyone would like to support, they can reach out to me there. Once I get to 700, I'm going to make a post about it and show examples of the stuff I want to uh, sell to kind of help out myself and the brand. So look up, look, uh, stay tuned for that, basically. Look forward to that. Yeah, I can't wait because, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, you know, you and I, I consider you a friend and stuff. And, yeah, so, guys, if you're listening on this Please uh, subscribe to his YouTube. Uh, help him get to uh, 700. Only you know, 15 he wants more. To, yeah, he need only 15 more as of uh, this recording. And get out there, you know. And uh, yeah, it's it, this just uh, you like know, you know he's got a, he's got a cool thing going. And uh, yeah, actually, one more question before I do let you go. I just thought of besides yeah. the uh, April 17th, uh, 2021 CCW show. Do you have any events that you're going to be doing in the near future? Oh. I'm pretty sure. So I was, I had um, planned to work more with uh, uh, Square Circle Megastarts. Okay. I'm not sure exactly when the next show will be. Cause we had dates for this year, but 
with the pandemic that kind of got scratched i know they'll have shows i think next year though so mm-hmm. i'll like stay tuned for that because i'll be recording their full shows uh I'm, aaw was gonna have a show in december but they kind of pushed it back so they'll be back in action next year so you can look forward to that as well and that's really all i'm sure of right now i'm not sure exactly when freelance wrestling is going to start going again but when that comes up you can see me there at their show at the logan square auditorium as well awesome well once again xavier thank you so much for your time man uh and uh i look forward to uh seeing you here at uh, in a couple months at the uh, ccw show in uh, michigan city heck yeah brother Thanks, Xavier, for uh, taking some time to chat with me. It was really neat to kind of hear your perspective on what it was like uh, shooting the show. Again, you can see this on um, Amazon Prime, Fight.TV, as well as Powered 4 TV. Uh, Xavier and his crew will also be recording the All the Action coming up on April 17th, 2021. Uh, Ticket information, if you're watching this on YouTube, is coming across the screen. And uh, if you're listening to this on any of the major podcasting platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google, Anchor, uh, Pocket Cast, whatever, um, the information for tickets will be in the episode description. That's all the time I have for this episode of What Do You Say with DDJ. Uh, Thank you to everyone for listening and have a great evening.